and welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. We love to cook. And we love to eat. We love to garden. We live a sustainable life. And every once in a while, we like to dance. Well, story time at the Brown House. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my kitchen. I'm Miss Lori, and this is Whippoorwill Holler. Story time, okay. The story today is we are fixing to get busy. <laughs> um, Y'all have heard in some of my past videos that uh, we try so hard to buy local. Um, and what I mean about that is our meat. Uh, we used to raise a lot of our meat. We don't raise, raise our meat anymore. Now we, Danny does hunt. Of course, he does fish. So we've always got fish or a little deer meat or you know, we used to, uh, we'd have fried squirrels, stuff like that, rabbit. But uh, I've not bought meat at the store, and I couldn't tell you when, because we do buy local. And we have a farm here locally that we buy um, half a beef from. And because that we don't go to town and we don't spend a lot of money on groceries, um, we're able to do that because we don't spend money at the grocery store for meat or anything like that. There's just, that's why you don't see Miss Lori do a lot of shopping uh, hauls because I don't do hauls. Um, we raise most of our stuff. If I run to the store, it's because I just have to run to the store just to get a few things. I buy a lot of stuff in bulk. And uh, so I've always just got stuff here. But what I'm trying to get at is I've got another half of beef coming. And, of course, we share this meat with our family and stuff, too. And it is some of the best beef. It's a uh, Seagraves Farm. Uh, it's up at uh, towards Dalton, Arkansas, not too far from where we live. We grew up with this family, and uh, it's just some really good meat, and we trust that the way that they raise them. Um, if, you, if you live around here and you want any information on that, just contact me, and uh, I'll give you their information. But anyways, I've got a half a beef coming. And I've still got meat in the freezer from our last half a beef. Not as much as... Uh, now, when you buy beef like that off a farm and you go and get it processed, your price, you're going to pay so much per pound for that, uh, for that half a steer. And then you're going to pay... Uh, your your meat processor so much a pound. Now, I know y'all gonna be asking me how much is it a pound around there and maybe by the time I put this video out, I'll know for sure because I'll ask Mr. Brown. But I do know that it's the same straight across, whether if it's steak or roast or hamburger meat. Um, we get a lot of uh, tenderized round steak and sirloin and uh, stew meat. I make them cut me up a lot of stew meat because we all know how much, how high stew meat is in the stores. So, I get a lot of good cuts, and it's the same price across the board, no matter what it is. Um, I may be lying to you. I'm just going to say this, and maybe I'll correct it. <laughs> I'll correct it by the time I get this video done. Um, oh... It may be a little bit higher now, but it was between 3 and $4 a pound. Let's just say that. And if I'm wrong on that, I will correct it by the end of this video. Because I'm sure Mr. Brown will tell me for sure what it is. But, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of that stew meat and some of the uh, roast out. And I'll be cutting them up. And y'all know, if y'all watched me in the past, that I am, um, I'm not one to can up like a bunch of stew and soups and stuff like that. Um, I'd love to can chicken and turkey and stuff like that. 
Um, I have canned up pork. I do have canned ham and uh, stuff like that. But I am more of an ingredient canner. I will can the stuff that I need to make the stew or the stroganoff or the soup or, you know, just stuff like that. But I won't, you know, just make a jar of a stew. I don't, I've done it, yes, and it's one of the things I won't ever do again because I don't care for it. But I do, I'm an ingredient canner. I, I can the ingredients that I need to make whatever I need to make. But I'm thinking in my head, and I'm thinking, what am I going to do with all this stew meat? And if I cut up all this um, roast, I'm pretty picky. Um, I think canned meat <laughs> is some of the ugliest um, canned stuff you can have in your pantry. I just don't think it's very pretty. But I do know that it tastes good, and it's a good way to preserve your meat. So I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm thinking, what can I do that I know that we're going to enjoy and that I can come in here um, during the weekday when I get in so late from work and uh, I can open a jar of this up and I know we can enjoy it in a lot of different ways. So what I come up with is Italian beef. Um, that is something we do like. And that is something that you can do so much with. You can make um, Italian, what is it, Italian beef sandwiches with it. You can serve it with rice. You can serve it with noodles. You can serve it with mashed potatoes. You can make Italian beef roll-ups with lasagna noodles. I mean, there are so many things that I'll be able to do with this. Now, have I done this before? No. <laughs> I'm, I've not ever uh, canned any Italian beef, but this is going to be my first try. And we're going to uh, can it up. It's going to be easy. From what I, I mean, I've read all about it, pe different people that's done it. They like it. And it's, it's easy peasy. And uh, it'll help you to do something with maybe those roasts you uh, got on sale. You can cut them up. Um, Stew meat is high, but like I said, I got it when I got a bunch of it when I got this half a, a beef. So, and I've got to make room for this other half of beef coming in. So this is what I'm going to be doing. So I'm only going to do so much right now because I want to see if I even like it. And if I like it, I'll continue to put the rest of it up so I can make room for my other. Because there's just, you can even make, uh, it just hit me, you can make Italian beef little sliders for like a Sunday lunch or something. I mean, there's just so much you could do with it. So, that's what we're going to be doing today. And I'm excited because I want to try this recipe. I want to try it for y'all. And if I and I'm just going to tell you the truth. If I make this, I can it up and I try it. And I just don't care for it. I'm going to tell you. But the thing of it is, you might like it. You may just love it. So, um I'm always going to tell y'all the truth on that, but uh, this is just a good thing I'm excited about doing. I'm, I'm glad that I found something that I, that I think I can do with all this meat that I know that me and Mr. Brown are going to like. Um, we're pretty picky about that stuff. So if I'm going to can something up and have it taking up space in my pantry, because I don't have a lot of space in my pantry. I've, I mean, it's full right now. Um, I want it full of canned products that I know that we're going to eat. It makes no sense to me just to be canning up a bunch of stuff that you have no idea if you're even going to eat. So this, I, I'm hoping this will be a good one. So we're going to get all the ingredients together and we're going to can us up some Italian beef and uh, I'm going to do it in quart jars. You can do it in pints, but I'm going to do it in quart jars today. I took out seven pounds of stew meat. That's just what I'm going to start with. I'm not sure how many quarts I'm going to get. Like I said, this, I'm just, you know, this will be the first time I do this, but once I do this, I'm going to know how many pounds it's going to take to do a canner full of uh, quart jars of Italian beef. So let's get our stuff together and let's get busy. Okay, I'm going to show y'all my stew meat. And you can see that most of the fat has been trimmed off. Now, I didn't do this. The people that at the meat processor, they're the ones that 
cut up and trim this meat. And it's, I'm telling you, it's really good meat. I know I tell you that all the time. It really is. But there's about seven pounds there. And here I've got the rest of my ingredients. I, this is your, it's over there where the salad dressing is. This is how when you would make your own Italian dress, dressing for your salads. And it comes, I think, four packs. Excuse me. <coughs> and I always buy the box. I've got beef broth and I've got a big jar of the peppercini peppers. And that's my ingredients. That's it. We got our jars. They're just at room temperature. They're sterilized and clean. And uh, I'm just going to start putting my my meat in here. Now, whether if you have stew meat or if you've cut up your own roast to make stew meat, either one, uh, you may be using venison uh, deer meat. It would be a good way to can up deer meat, making an Italian venison out of it instead of Italian beef. I'm going to drop in a peppercini. And I know I say that funny, but that's my accent. I can't help it. And I'm going to put in a teaspoon of the, the seasoning. And like I said, it's the seasoning that you would make your own Italian dressing if you were making home, you know, your own homemade. You can buy it in a single pack or you can buy it in a box. And there's four packs in a box. Um, how many peppercini peppers you want in your jar is up to you. Me and Mr. Brown are kind of wimpy when it comes to that, but we'll see. I'm going to stuff one down in there. So that'll be, I'll put about three in there. And next time, if I do like this, next time I may put a couple more. So we're going to put another teaspoon of my seasoning, Italian seasoning mix. I'm not putting any salt in here. I'm going to put just a little bit more meat up here on top. You want to leave an inch head space. And I can tell you, I don't know how far this seven pounds of meat is going to go. I don't know how many quarts I'm going to get. But this is my learning process today of making this. So I'll get it all figured out. Now I'm going to pour about a tablespoon of the peppercini, peppercini <laughs> juice in there. Give it a good taste. And then I'm going to fill it the rest of the way up with uh, my beef broth. Like I said, leave an inch head space. And I'm going to debubble it. I may have to add a little bit more broth to it. You do want to debubble it really, really good. I think I'm going to put another pepper in there. So that's four that I put in there so far. Now, I, I've talked about this before, but I can tell you that I just don't think any canned meat is very pretty when it's canned up. <laughs> oh, it's just not. But don't let the looks deceive you because so much of it tastes so good. So we got that one done, and I'm going to do a second one. I think I'm going to drop one of the peppers in the bottom. And add my meat to it. You know, you could do this with chicken too. Just like you were canning chicken. Put your pepperoncinis in there and a little bit of juice and some chicken broth. And I think that would be delicious too. I'm going to drop another pepper in there too. Now I took out seven quart jars. And I'm the what I'm seeing now. I don't think I'm gonna get seven quart jars out of seven pounds of meat. We're gonna at least try to get six. 
But after I get this done, I can figure up in my head pretty much how many pounds of made it's going to take to do so many quart jars. And like I said, you can do this in pints if you don't want this. I think this right here will be good for me and Mr. Brown. We can have supper out of it, and then he can have leftovers for his lunch the next day. Maybe. It may be just enough for supper for two people. I'm going to put another pepper in there. Now, I'm not cross-contaminating because I will be using all this. I know you're all seeing me put my fingers in there. Somebody's going to say something, but I promise you I'm not cross-contaminating. I've never done that in my life. I'm going to put another teaspoon of my dressing seasoning. We're going to put a little juice in here. A tablespoon or so. And then finish it off with some beef broth. And I'm just going to continue to do the rest of these jars. And when I come back, I'm going to see how many, how many jars I got out of seven pounds of meat. I hope it tastes good. I'm going to debubble it. And I'm going to hope that this, my juice doesn't siphon out any. I like for, if I can, meat, I want it all to be covered with the, the broth. Okay, I got them all done. And I got six quarts out of seven pounds. But the six quart, the six jar is not as full as the other five. But there's enough in there to can and enough for a meal. So, if I'm wanting to do seven quarts, I'm going to take out um, probably, I would take out at least eight, if not nine pounds. That's how much I would have for seven quarts. Now, seven pounds would have done several pint jars. So, I've cleaned my, my rims off. With some vinegar water. And I'm just putting my lids on. Um, everything's pretty much at room temperature. This is raw pack. Nothing's been, the, the beef broth is not heated. The meat's not heated. The jars are not heated. I'm going to put my rings on. A lot of times when they're canning meat, they'll, they'll heat the broth up and uh, there's really not any reason then to because once you put your jars in there and everything's at room temperature, even the, my, I've got three quarts of water in my canner and uh, it's at room temperature and I'll bring all this up to temp at the same time. There won't be anything hotter than the other that will cause uh, any of the liquid to siphon out. Okay, we got them ready for the canner. Canner's ready. Three quarts of water. You can tell my grandkids are here. <laughs> my house is a little bit cluttered today, a little bit of mess. Oh, I don't care. There we go. Now we're just going to put our top on and turn the burner on. We're going to wait till the steam starts coming out. And when steam comes out, we will time it for 10 minutes. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. I put my uh, pressure valve on there. We're going to let it get up to 10, 11, and then we'll count it down. We counted it down to 90 minutes. Now, if you were doing punch, you'd do it for 75 minutes. 
and the little bit of fat you see up there on the top it's not going to hurt nothing and you'll be able to get it right off there i know a lot of people say you can't when you're canning something you can't have any fat in there because it'll it'll ruin your product but there's not enough in there to ruin it and anytime you can especially beef you're going to have just a little bit of fat up there on the top that comes up but there's not a whole lot there it may look like it but it's not so we're going to open one of these up and we're going to cook something we're going to try it we're going to taste it because i want to know what it tastes like and i want to know if i'll do this again and can up some more of it and i think today we're going to be doing probably either rice or mashed potatoes So, let's open up a jar. Okay, let's open up a jar of our Italian beef. And like I said, it's not real pretty. It's got a good seal on it. You know, that really smells good. You know how sometimes you'll can up some meat and... Uh, it really don't even smell good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and try to get some of this fat out of here. There's not much in here, really. And I'm going to take this pepper out. Uh, when I go to cooking this, I really don't want all these peppers in there. You may want them in there while you're cooking it. I'm really... Uh, I'm really kind of anxious to see how spicy this meat's going to be with the pepperoncinis in there. And that may not be spicy at all. But you know what's spicy to me may not be spicy to you. Okay, that's not very much fat up there. I got it all off. There's a little bit around the rim, but not much. So there we got our, our meat. You can see the pepper in there, the broth. It smells really good. So now we're going to get it in our skillet. We're going to be eating ours today. I'm going to make Mr. Brown a pot of mashed potatoes. I'm going to put this with the gravy in a skillet. I'm going to heat it up and then I'm going to thicken it up. And we're going to eat this over mashed potatoes. That's going to be the first way we eat it. Hey, I'm just going to turn my skillet on here about medium low and I'm just going to pour this whole jar in here. It looks like that to me the chunks cooked up really good. Um, they're not like just all mush and that's kind of what I was afraid of a little bit. I think while this is heating up I'm going to leave the peppers in there and before I thicken it up I'll take the peppers out. I really, I don't want to taste it at this point. I want to heat it up a little bit before I taste it. But this is going to be really good once I thicken that gravy up and uh, serve it over some mashed potatoes. I thought about rice. Rice is my favorite. Mr. Brown, I eat rice. Mr. Brown thinks that rice should have sugar and cream in it, though, because that's why he's raised. I was raised eating rice with everything, savory or sweet. But uh, I think today he'd probably rather have this served over mashed potatoes with something on the side. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. While this is heating up, we'll talk just a minute. Um, let's talk about the different ways that we can serve this. I talked about it um, a little bit earlier before we canned everything. And uh, I, it's just going to be a, a very... Uh, something that you can use in so many different recipes and casseroles and just a lot of things um there's a lot of recipes out there for different ways to can meat and i have tried several of them and i just don't care for it so that's why i say i'm kind of picky about this when i do it because if i i don't want to waste my meat that's for sure but this is something that i've got to do to make room in the freezer so we're going to heat this up thicken it up and then we're going to see what it tastes like. So y'all stick around. Okay, our 
beef is heated up pretty good. I'm going to take these peppers out. You can eat them if you want them. I just like the flavor that it puts in your meat. And you see how those that stew meat is still holding up. It's still holding its, you know, its shape up. So what I'm going to do now is I've got some, you can use cornstarch, you can use flour or arrowroot. I'm going to use, I've got a half a cup of water here. And I've got a couple of tablespoons of arrowroot. I'm going to put a little bit in there. Right there is a pepper stem. Make sure you get those out. Because I guarantee you Danny will find it. I won't. He will. I lost it. Maybe I'll find it here in a minute. There it is. Now it's starting to thicken up already. I didn't want to put that whole half cup in there because I didn't know how good it was going to thicken up. And you can see how well it's starting to thicken up. Yeah, it's thickening up pretty good. I'm going to put just a little bit more of my arrowroot in there. So I'm going to say I put about a fourth of a cup with... Um, tablespoon of cornstarch or arrowroot or whatever you're using as a thickener. Let that cook just a minute. And I can tell you I'm really getting excited about tasting this. I want a taste of the broth. Okay, I can taste the uh, the Italian seasoning, uh, dressing seasoning in it. That's really good. I can, of course, I can taste a little bit of the beef broth. I can taste some of the pepperoni uh, peppers in there. I think next time I'm going to put some more, probably a few more peppers in the jar. But I'm here to tell you... I'm going to get a little piece of meat out too here, and I'm going to taste it. I just tasted other gravy. But I'm going to tell you this is delicious. So far. You can't, so far you can't go wrong with this. So I'm pretty happy with this. You know, there's so many things that you can, uh, and I have through the many years of canning, and uh, some of it was pretty much a flop that I just did not care for. But from what I'm tasting right now, I think this is going to be a good one. Okay, I'm back. I'm wanting to taste this piece of stew meat for you. <laughs> Mr. Brown's not here right now, but he will be at home here in a little bit. And uh, I'll get him on here and let him taste it for you. But he'll have mashed potatoes and all that good stuff with it too. It's tender. I can taste the seasonings in this too, in the meat. I think I think next time my meat, I'll probably uh, salt my my meat just a little bit before I put it in the jars, because y'all notice that I didn't put no salt in it because I wasn't sure about the um, that uh, Italian dressing seasoning. I just wasn't sure about it. But I think it can, and I can salt it right now. So you can salt it when you put it in your pan, that's for sure. The taste is really good. I give this one, um, this is something that I would do, and I'm going to, and there's going to be quite a bit on my, on my shelves because I've got quite a bit to put up to make room for all that meat. But, uh. I'm not going to steer y'all wrong. This is, I, I think y'all really like this. I like it, and I think Mr. Brown's going to like it too. It's really thickening up. I really think that uh, I'm going to put some salt on it 
and I'm going to continue to let it warm up. I'm going to cook some mashed potatoes, and then I'm going to figure out something for a side. And I'm really craving some vegetables, so we'll figure something out. And then we'll wait for Mr. Brown to get here and let him taste it. Okay, I wanted to bring y'all back just for a minute because I am going to put a little salt. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add me about a tablespoon of butter in there. That's going to give it a really richer taste. And since we're going to be putting this on potatoes, that's going to be good. So that's the only other thing I added to it was a little salt. And a little butter. So we're eating some of that Italian beef that I canned up. I wanted to try it and go ahead and put it with our canning video so they wouldn't know if it's any good or not. Of course, we always need your approval. Well, it's very, very tender, very tasty. To me, it's almost like it's been in the crock pot all day long. It's got, it's really good, a good flavor to it. Well, it's got the pepperoncinis I canned with it, and I put a little bit of that pepperoncini. <laughs> People are gonna make fun of me because I can't say that right. Juicing with it, and I put beef broth, and then I put a little bit of a. Oh, it's that seasoning mix that you make your own homemade Italian dressing, salad dressing with, mm -hmm. and you put that in there. And I think I'm going to do this again with some more of that stew meat since we got meat coming in. We need room in the freezer. I think I'll put a little more pepperoncini peppers in it. I may put a little bit, just a little bit more um, seasoning in it. And I think I'm going to put some garlic cloves in it. I think I'll add that to it. Then I think it'll be perfect. What do you think? <laughs> it gets much better. I, can't, I won't be able to stand it. And I was telling them, there's so many ways you can eat with this. You can eat it over mashed potatoes, rice noodles. You can make, you can shred it up a little bit and make Italian beef sandwiches with it on a hoagie with uh, peppers on it. So there's, there's just a lot of different things you could do with this meat. And I think you could do deer meat. I think you do venison this way too and can it. So I hope y'all like this video. Um, it's a really, it, it's just a really good, it turned out really good, y'all. I think y'all would enjoy it too. Anybody that's ate the Italian beef that you cook in the slow cooker or the, the pot roast or anything, you're going to like this too. So it's a good one. It's a keeper, and I'll be making more here this week probably. I think I said <clears throat> I said crock pot earlier, didn't I? It's okay. We don't, oh, we, there's, I ain't seen a crock pot, and I don't know when. There's one cooker. thing that I couldn't tell them for sure, and I was talking about our, uh, our beef being processed. Do you have... Just kind of a overall price on what it costs straight across the board from steak to hamburger meat in this area, what we pay for it. I hope I didn't fib to them too much. <laughs> What'd you say? I said between three and four. And it's probably more like four or five. Four or five now? Well, I mean, it's. <clears throat> we, we buy the beef. Right. On hoof. That's a, that's a dollar fifty a pound. That come to what eight hundred and something dollars, and it's gonna cost I forget between anyway we're gonna have somewhere between nine hundred and a thousand dollars in roughly two hundred and fifty to two seventy five, and I think it comes. 
Well, I mean, I was talking about the meat processing part, what they charge per pound, what I guess. Oh, per pound? Yeah. Well, you know, that all comes off on the rail, too. I mean, that's... that's uh... I was just trying to get my idea. Well, it costs, what, two... I don't remember, $284? Just under $300, I think, to get it processed. It was 189 last time. Oh, was it? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it won't be much more than that this time. Yeah. Be under two hundred dollars then. So that makes it around a thousand something dollars. So between buying the the beef, the half a beef off the the farm, and then getting it processed, you're talking between four and five dollars a pound, straight across the board. That's for steaks and everything. That's hamburger steak, roast. Yes. And we know that these cattle are taken care of. We know what they eat, and we know they they feed them out good. So it's just a good deal. So, anyways, I wanted to get that straight with y'all. So I sure didn't want to fib to you about it. So we'll see y'all in a couple of days. Probably this weekend, maybe. Don't know what we'll be doing, but like we always say, we'll be doing something, huh, Paul? This is really good.